For decades and, and decades, the United States had plenty of natural gas supplies, domestic gas that was drilled from uh, fields in uh, Texas and Oklahoma and all over the country, really. In the late 90s, the drillers started having trouble replacing the fields that they had been producing from. They found it was getting harder and harder to maintain our domestic supplies of natural gas. I first heard about Michael Smith in the early 2000s when um, entrepreneurs like himself were starting to think, oh man, if we can't get enough natural gas in the United States domestically, we're going to have to get it from somewhere else. For very few people who were, who were considering this, if we can't get domestic gas, we're going to have to import it from the rest of the world. And it's hard to import gas. The trouble with moving gas is that it's, you know, it's gaseous. How do you how do, how do you move gas? You put it in a pipeline usually, um, but you can't have a pipeline that goes from oh the Middle East all the way to the U.S. You have to uh, condense the gas. So what they do to turn um, natural gas into liquefied natural gas is they build these enormous factories that basically chill it down. Think of a refrigerator that is so cold that it will take the air around you and condense it 600 times. And when you shrink it and condense it, it turns into a liquid, and then you can pump that liquid into uh, basically a, a thermos. And in this case, these thermoses are the size of gigantic ships, huge tankers that are insulated and they can keep the gas in its liquid state as it's floating around the world. So what Michael Smith thought was, oh, you know, I've found some really great locations on the Texas Gulf Coast where we could import this LNG from other parts of the world. We're going to import the gas and then um, regasify it, turn it from a liquid back into a gas, and then just put it into the U.S. pipeline network so that you know it can replace the, the domestic gas. LNG is the cleanest uh, fossil fuel, and we're taking U.S. LNG and exporting it to countries that do not have enough uh, energy and would otherwise be burning uh, dirty coal or bunker fuel, um, which is also very bad for the environment. Mm -hmm. So the quicker we can be all on natural gas until the day comes that uh, we're on renewables, the better it is for uh, the environment global warming. He raised about $800 million, mostly from ConocoPhillips, to, uh, to build this regasification terminal. The problem was that as they were building this terminal, something happened in the United States, and that was the, the fracking revolution. It's short for hydraulic fracturing. That's where drillers will go down you know, two miles into the earth. They'll drill sideways into a very thin layer of, of shale that is laden with oil or natural gas. You know, no one knew that all of a sudden, over the past 10 or 15 years, that drillers would discover this method of unlocking trillions upon trillions of cubic feet worth of domestic gas that we, we never knew was there. And a lot of people don't like fracking. They're, they're worried about the effect that fracking could have on groundwater supplies. But the reality of the situation is that fracking has allowed us to unlock so much natural gas that we can displace the coal that we've used to, uh, in the past, provide almost half of America's electrical power. Michael Smith was building this project to import gas at the same time that America's frackers were unlocking more gas than we ever knew existed in the United States. By the time it was completed in 2008, they had a, a shiny new import terminal. And then they looked around and said, oh no, this is completely obsolete. There was no demand for importing gas like they thought there would be. They decided that what they would do was be one of the first to export liquefied natural gas from the United States to the rest of the world. But it wasn't that easy. He raised $800 million to build the import terminal. 
In order to build the export terminal, he would need to raise $13 billion. There are very few construction projects in the United States that, that have ever cost more than Freeport LNG. This is something, you know, no one had, had raised this much money before for a project, especially not one that was really led and controlled by a single individual. It's so impressive that they've they've built this thing. It's you know bigger than any factory, any refinery you've you've ever seen. And over the last year, Freeport LNG has exported roughly 200 cargoes of U.S. gas in the form of LNG. Um, this is just a, a, it's a tremendous development. They found so much gas that now we can send it around to the rest of the world and help other countries not have to use coal as well. There is still a billion people in the world without electricity, um, and they want a piece of the pie that we take for granted. Michael Smith owns roughly 60% of this all. He, he was able to hold on to control of the, uh, of the majority of the equity in this operation. Forbes estimates right now that, that Michael Smith is worth uh, roughly $1 billion. The beauty of his business at Freeport LNG is that you don't just build this export facility and not have customers. What they did while they were lining up the financing, they convinced these buyers in South Korea and Japan and China to enter into 20 year contracts. He knows how much money Freeport LNG is gonna make pretty much every year for the next two decades. So we have him at about a net worth of $1 billion right now, but this business will be generating so much cash over the next few years that they'll be able to pay off their roughly $11 billion worth of debt that they're carrying. And after that, it's all gravy. You know, assuming it all goes right, there's, you know, there's still some risk there. Um, there could be a hurricane that blows through. The United States gets roughly 20% of our electricity by combusting natural gas in, in power plants. Because of all this gas that we've discovered, um, the United States has been able to reduce our carbon emissions tremendously over the last 10 or 15 years. So as coal goes down, use of gas is going up. And that's the case around the entire world. Um, thanks to the gas that, that we're exporting in the form of LNG. Um, much of the LNG that flows out of the Freeport um, project goes to places like Japan and South Korea and China. And uh, you, one cargo of this LNG can provide enough gas to make the electricity that can power thousands and thousands of homes for months at a time. If we're concerned about carbon emissions, people see natural gas as kind of a, a bridge, a bridge that is taking us from the old times of coal to a future where we can hopefully rely mostly on renewables like solar and, and wind and, and other options. Um, so. Gas is, is that very important bridge fuel that will get us to where we need to go.